Here are two baskets. There are two apples and three oranges in basket one and three apples and five oranges in basket two. The probability of drawing an orange from basket one is three fifths. And the probability of drawing an apple from basket two is three eighths. In both the cases, the fruit drawn is given and the basket from which the fruit is drawn is also given. Suppose an apple is drawn at random from one of the baskets. Can you find the probability that the apple is drawn from basket 1? To solve such types of problems, in 1763, a mathematician, Thomas Baez, developed a new formula by using conditional probability. This new formula is called Baez's theorem. Before proving the theorem and discussing it in detail, let's look at some definitions and basic theorems. Consider an experiment of tossing three coins simultaneously. The sample space of the experiment has eight outcomes, which are as shown here. Consider three events, A, B and C, where Event A is defined as getting at least two heads. Event B is defined as getting exactly two tails. And event C is defined as getting three tails. From these three events, it is clear that events AB, events AC, and events BC are disjoint. And the union of events AB and C is sample space S. The probability of event A is one half, event B is three eighths, and event C is one eighth. The set of such events A, B, and C of a sample space is a partition of the sample space. Again, let's consider another event, E, of sample space S, defined as getting a head in the first coin. The complement of event E is E dash as shown. We know that an event and its complement are always disjoint and their union is equal to the same sample space. Since events are non-empty, the probabilities of events E and E dash are also greater than zero. Again, this shows that events E and E complement together represent another partition of sample space S. Likewise, we can have any number of partitions of a sample space. In general, a set of events E1, E2, E3, and so on, till En, represents a partition of sample space S if they are pairwise disjoint. The union of the events is the sample space itself and the probability of each event is greater than zero. Next, let's discuss the theorem of total probability, which is based on the partitions of a sample space. Let the set of events E1, E2 and so on till En be a partition of sample space S. And suppose that each of the events E1, E2 and so on till En has non-zero probability of occurrence. Let A be any event associated with S. Then, the probability of A is equal to the summation of the product of the probability of EJ and the probability of A given EJ, where J is running from 1 to N. Given that the set of events E1, E2 and so on till EN is a partition of sample space S, by the definition of partition, Sample space S is equal to the union of all the events in the partition. The events are pairwise disjoint. Also, the probability of each event is greater than zero. Now, for any event A associated with sample space S, A is equal to A intersection S. Since S is the union of all the events of the partition, A is equal to a intersection, the union of all the events. Now, 
by the distributive law of intersection over the union. A is equal to the union of A intersection E1, A intersection E2, and so on till A intersection EN. From the figure, A intersection EI is a subset of EI. Similarly, A intersection EJ is a subset of EJ. Also, the events are pairwise disjoint. This implies that any pair of events EI and EJ are disjoint, for I is not equal to J. Therefore, A intersection EI and A intersection EJ are also disjoint for all. I is not equal to J. And I, J is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on till n. Thus the probability of A is equal to the probability of the union of A intersection E1, A intersection E2, and so on till A intersection En. This is equal to the sum of the probabilities of A intersection E1, A intersection E2, and so on till A intersection En. Now, by the multiplication rule of probability, we get the probability of A as shown. This can also be written as the summation of the probability of EJ into the probability of A given EJ, where J is running from 1 to N. Hence the theorem is proved. Let's now state and prove Bayer's theorem. Bayer's theorem states that if E1, E2 and so on till En are n non-empty events that constitute a partition of sample space S, that is, the events are pairwise disjoint and the union of events is equal to S, and A is any event of non-zero probability, then the probability of EI given A is equal to the probability of EI into the probability of A given EI, whole divided by the summation of the probability of EJ into the probability of A given EJ for all I is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on till N. And J is running from 1 to N. It is given that the events E1, E2 and so on till EN is a partition of sample space S. This implies that the events are pairwise disjoint and the union of the events is equal to sample space S. It is also given that A is a non-empty event associated with S. Now, by the formula of conditional probability, the probability of any event of the partition EI given event A has already occurred is equal to the probability of A intersection EI divided by the probability of A. By the multiplication rule of probability, the numerator, the probability of A intersection EI can be written as the probability of EI into the probability of A, given event EI has already occurred. Since A is a non-empty event associated with sample space S, and events E1, E2 and so on till EN forms a partition of S. Then, by the theorem of total probability, the denominator P of A is equal to the summation of the probability of EJ into the probability of A given EJ, where J is running from 1 to N. Hence, Bayer's theorem is proved. Sometimes, Bayer's theorem is called the formula for the probability of causes. In Bayer's theorem, events E1, E2 and so on till En are called hypotheses. The probability of EI is called the priori probability of hypothesis EI. The probability of EI given A is called the posteriori probability of hypothesis EI. Let's get back to the example we considered in the beginning. 
there are two apples and three oranges in basket one and three apples and five oranges in basket two. Suppose an apple is drawn at random from one of the baskets. Let's find the probability that the apple is drawn from basket one. Let B1 and B2 be the events of choosing baskets 1 and 2 respectively. Since the events are equally likely, the probability of choosing each basket is 1 half. Let E be the event of drawing an apple from the baskets. The probability of drawing an apple given that basket 1 has already been selected is the number of apples in basket 1 divided by the total number of fruits in it which is equal to two-fifths. The probability of drawing an apple, given that basket 2 has already been selected, is the number of apples in basket 2 divided by the total number of fruits in it, which is equal to three-eighths. Now, the probability of drawing a fruit from basket 1, given that the drawn fruit is an apple, is the probability of B1 given E. Now. By applying Bayer's theorem, we have the probability of B1 given E is as shown. On substituting the values and simplifying, we get sixteen divided by thirty one. Hence the probability that the drawn apple is from basket one is equal to 16 divided by 31.